I can do my research. My tablet's right here in front of me. Doi. Please stand by. Accessing interwebs. Princeton, Bloomsbury. Laced review, Princeton's Bloomsbury EP, by Ross A. Lincoln in Arts and Entertainment on March 5, 2009, 12 a.m. Last October, Laced had the opportunity to interview local band Princeton as they were beginning the push to support their debut recording, the Bloomsbury EP. There you go. <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. A bargain bag. It's what's for dinner. Well, unless you're watching this video during breakfast or lunch, in which case, well, you know. But anyway, bargain bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, uh, seven CDs each, from the late Skips Records and CD World in Eugene, Oregon. And between opening the two bags right in front of the camera, uh, I will talk about a CD that's in my collection that uh, I have found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain bin of a retailer near you. Uh, you and that definition of what you can find in a bargain bin is getting more and more expansive these days, especially when it comes to CDs. Lots of people are just dumping their CDs uh, in favor of vinyl, most people. Some people are streaming, but you know, to each his own, right? But anyway, before the bags, I talk about and break down what I found in last month's pair of bargain bags, tell you what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, and so forth. Uh, so basically in rough uh, order of junkers to keepers, as I like to call them, cast-offs to keepers actually. Uh, let's go ahead and go over them. Uh, the first one I actually no longer have. Uh, I sent it to a friend who would probably have much more use for it than I would. Not that it wasn't a bad CD. Uh, this one is Air Guitar by Kathy Fink and Marcy Markser. Uh, it was basically an album of, of songs for kids. Uh, they're, they're both very talented musicians and singers, Kathy and Marcy. Uh, and they, they actually tackled an interesting wide variety of genres in this album. Very cute, you know, in their own cute, kid-friendly stylings. Uh, nice album, and they've actually done, I looked up on the web, and they've done several albums, and I think they are still, uh, they're still recording, and, well, uh, COVID notwithstanding, I think they're still performing as well. So uh, they've been a duo for many, many, many years. This CD was from the mid or late 90s, as I recall. But yes, very cute CD. It's just uh, my friend that I sent the CD to works with kids regularly, so he would have much more use for it than I would. But uh, yeah, good CD. And then uh, these next two are ones that I actually didn't listen to, total disclosure here, but uh, just because they are classical compilations, the first one actually did show up before in, an, in another bargain bag, uh, and it was also sealed in plastic like this one. Uh, Naxos, 10 Years of Success, a compilation celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Naxos label, classical compilation. And another classical compilation is For Guilty Pleasures, and what's more to be said than it's a classical compilation. I have several classical compilations in my collection and some, you know, actual classical albums. So yeah, not a whole lot of a reason to listen to or keep either of these CDs. Not that they weren't bad, you know, classical music is classical music, basically. And then the next one, I actually did not listen to this one either, just because I never care for the Nature Sounds tapes or, or CDs. I just talked about a big cassette collection that had a lot of those in it, so I'm, my brain's still on tapes. But yes, North Sound, uh, go directly to the creation. Uh, the poetry of Walt Whitman. So yes, it's Nature Sounds and Music with uh, the poetry of Walt Whitman voicing over it. Um, just not really my thing. So yeah, I was in, in a bit of a crunch for time the last month, so yeah, those three CDs I didn't listen to, but the rest of them I did, Scout's Honor, uh, including this one, uh, MCA Master Series. It is a jazz and new age compilation. Uh, I had gotten a different volume of this same series in a bargain bag last year, I think. So yeah, not bad stuff. Just, you know, nothing that makes me want to keep the CD. But uh, yeah, Acoustic Alchemy is uh, one of the better known uh, jazz slash new age groups, and there were two cuts uh, from them, from their discography on, on here. So then we get into the CDs of other varying genres that uh, most of them I did not keep. I'm keeping, oh, just two of them actually. Uh, this one, Endless Summer by Finez. I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. But yeah, I this one I did not care for at all. And I mean, I listened to it, but I only listened to about half of it. It is very glitchy, very techno-ish. Uh, in my opinion, it was kind of a mess, honestly. Uh, not the kind of stuff that... It's just not the kind of stuff that I'm into. If you really, really like the extremely out-there, avant-garde electronica, 
that's kind of atonal, kind of uh, uh, arrhythmic, if that's a word, you know, it doesn't follow a steady rhythm, and it is just very, very glitchy, very techno-ish, lots of bleeps and bloops, and, you know, uh, then you might like this, but yeah, I just honestly, for my own personal tastes, did not find anything appealing in this at all, so yeah, sorry to say. Then we have uh, a soft piano uh, a CD here, not necessarily classical because it, it's this own composer's own works, Danny Wright. The CD is called Fantasies. Yeah, just very gentle piano stuff, good for relaxing. If you like the relaxing, soothing kind of music for studying or reading or whatever, you might like this, but yeah. Uh, I, I have plenty of other CDs that are kind of in this vein, so for that reason, not really much uh, telling me to keep this, to hang on to it, just no reason. And then next up here we have a four-track EP by a group called Princeton. Uh, the EP is called Bloomsbury. And uh, yeah, not bad at all. Uh, it's just, you know, pretty much what I can say about all the cast-offs is, you know, not bad stuff. It's just not my thing. Uh, I, I almost never run into any truly bad albums uh, in Bargain Bag. But yeah, this is basically chamber pop, uh, folk pop kind of stuff, you know, kind of intertwining those two genres. Uh, the, the, some of the instrumentation, for instance, uh, you got uh, banjo and ukulele and uh, lap steel guitar and harpsichord. So yeah, some kind of kind of far out kind of uh, throwback instruments, uh, throw way back, I guess you could say, when you're talking harpsichord. Uh, but yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, um, you know, I would re recommend or suggest checking out to see if Princeton's catalog is uh, available for streaming. So yeah. And then we're dipping into some hard rock here. We have a group called St. James, and uh, their album is called American Man. Uh, I, I thought it was okay, except there's one thing. Uh, the lead singer's voice was a little bit too much like Ozzy for me. So in that respect, this kind of came off sounding like a Black Sabbath cover, cover band in a way. Uh, but it, it's original songs. They're, they're not covers of Sabbath or anything. But uh, yeah, okay stuff. Just, you know, like, the, like I said, not my thing. But uh, yeah, this one is actually already uh, earmarked for a friend of mine staked his claim to this, so uh, he is getting that CD. So I hope he enjoys it more than I did. That's all I can say. Then we have a familiar name uh, in amongst the CDs here, Martina McBride, uh, with her album Evolution. And pretty good stuff. Uh, I, I've never been... I, I think I had a Martina McBride CD in one of my bargain bags a long time ago, close to the beginning of when I started this feature or it might have been a different uh, high-profile country singer. But uh, yeah, not bad stuff. I can see why she is basically a country music legend that she is now. It's just, you know, this was just not quite to my liking. Uh, and one particular thing that stood out for me, uh, track four, A Broken Wing. Uh, the There was a guitar line in there that sounded a lot like the classic song, To Know Him Is To Love Him, but I did not see Phil Spector, who was the uh, writer of that song, get any credit for it, so I'm kind of wondering, I have to... Uh, I, I looked up and didn't see anything that obviously pointed out to any sort of copyright dispute or anything, but, uh, you know, that's just one thing that kind of mm, left a mm, taste in my mouth, you know, just that they, they borrowed, seemed to borrow heavily from that song, but didn't seem to credit the original songwriter, so... but. Other than that, this was, and it was a fine album, as I said, you know, Martina McBride is a country legend for a reason. Just, you know, I didn't find much of anything to compel me to keep the CD. So, and then we have, I realize now that I should have ordered these differently because we're going back to hard rock. Uh, this one is Sugar Shack is the name of the artist and Top Loader is the name of the album. But yes, this is also hard rock, but uh, with a female vocalist. So a little something different there for you. So I don't know, uh, Jeff, you might like this one as well. Maybe I'll just throw this one in. Uh, for the heck of it. But uh, yeah, not much else I can say about that. I'm probably going to keep these next three, uh, although I'm only going to mention two because the third one is going to be my Spotlight CD in the middle of the video. We have Kille, or unless it's pronounced Kille, and the album is called Flor de Abril. And this is from Spain, actually, I found out uh, in doing my research after the video. And it is very much world music, very, uh, so it sounds at uh, as near as I can guess, traditional Spanish music. Very good stuff. I, I, I kind of enjoyed this. This is very mellow, relaxing when you're in the mood for world music. You could do a lot worse than Kill I here, or Kill I. But yeah, I'm going to keep this one, give it uh, several more spins. I've got a small world music collection, and I, I don't try reaching out my feelers on purpose toward world music, but uh, I just kind of wait to let it find me. And uh, this one found me, and it's, uh, it's actually pretty darn good. 
And then the last one I will be shouting out here, as I said, the final one it will be uh, my Spotlight CD. We have Alphonse Mouzon with his album Morning Sun. And this one really took me by surprise. I was not expecting anything from this. I was expecting kind of kitschy stuff. Uh, although really I shouldn't because the, the cover art is kind of cool, kind of tasteful. And in a way the cover art is reminiscent of 70s jazz albums. And for very good reason. This album has a lot of 70s influences. I mean, it just piles on the 70s influences. It's got a real soul, funk, and jazz feel. Just blends all three of those genres together, and it's really, really cool, really appealing. Lots of vintage-sounding synthesizers, which give it a funky, kind of a uh, al almost a disco twist, but not really. There are really no disco beats, per se, in this album. It is jazz, uh, much, but much more with a soul and funk twist, as I said. Very cool stuff. I'm going to check and see if I actually did not do any checking uh, yet to see if Alphonse Mouzon has any other albums, but uh, this one is definitely a keeper. I'm really liking this one. When I'm in a funky mood, I'm going to spin this one. Good stuff. Okay, now here's the moment that I've been waiting for. Well, the one of two moments is my favorite part of these videos is opening the bags. And yes, as you can see, they are stapled securely. And as Skip admonished when the store was open, no peeking. And I do not peek before I open these. Cause as I said before, this is like Christmas 12 times a year. I get to unwrap a present. So let's slice open the bag here. And one thing I like to do for you guys is give you a customary peekaboo of the CDs before I get to see what's inside of them. Yeah, come on. Open up the bag all the way. Open up and say, ah. Oh. Okay, here you go. So let's see what's in here. Let's check out the first CD. Nine Days Old. I have never heard of these guys before. And Clipper Mills, uh, it doesn't tell me what state is in. Well, it's, it's the, the uh, price tag is covering up what state Clipper Mills is in, but uh, obviously an indie release. So kind of like the cover art with the apples. We have Paps. 200 Hands, the remixes. Oh, it is from a record label located in Greece, Athens, Greece. So it is a remix EP. So that'll be interesting to find out what that is. But there is uh, what looks like almost Japanese text at the bottom. I'm completely guessing. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Then we have... Oh, City of Industry. It's a soundtrack from a movie starring Harvey Keitel, Stephen Dorff, and Timothy Hutton. So, yeah. Lush, Tricky, Death in Vegas, Lion Rock. And I've, yeah, Tricky I've heard of, and I've heard of Death in Vegas, but the other artists that I'm seeing on the track list, I don't recall ever having heard of. So that could be an interesting thing to uh, listen to. And we have People Beyond or Beyond People. I don't know because the spine is blank. No text on the spine. Uh, Walking the Systemites. You got me. It's obviously an indie release. So, yeah. I have absolutely no idea what that is. So I can't make any comments. I do like guessing what genre something is. Something tells me it's hip-hop. Just because of the back cover of the guys in silhouette. I'm just I'm thinking it's hip-hop. We'll find out next month if I'm right. And we have, oh, Clay Aiken. There's a, a recognizable name. Uh, this is his, I believe, his debut album, Measure of a Man, which I, I have, actually. So, yes, this one I don't need to listen to because I already own it. Although it's been a long time since I've listened to it, so maybe I will make it the Spotlight album next month. Consider that a possible spoiler alert, but not sure because I haven't gotten there yet. Then we have Indigenous, Live at Pachyderm. Interesting. So, yeah. Another one that I have absolutely no uh, comment on because I don't know what it is. Then we have... Oh, ABC. This is a group from the uh, the 80s. They were popular. And it's called Absolutely. I don't know if this is a Greatest Hits compilation or not. I think maybe it is. Because, yeah, Poison Arrow and The Look of Love, which are two of their biggest hits, are tracks one and two. So, yeah, it is probably a Greatest Hits compilation. But I already have a different Greatest Hits compilation. So this one may be going up for grabs as well. So, uh, oh, I forgot to do the uh, my bag thing after the uh, oh, the last CD comes out of it. 
Okay, now we have arrived at the midpoint of the video, approximately, and you guys know what that means. We are talking about the Spotlight Bargain Bag CD for the month of February 2021. And for those of you who have a good attention to detail will remember what was missing from the breakdown that I did a few minutes ago, and that is the Harry Connick Jr. album, She. This was uh, in my bargain bag last month, as I said. And this is his ninth album, which was released in 1994. And now up to this point in Harry Connick Jr.'s career, uh, he had never ventured outside of the jazz field. Uh, Great American songbook renditions, big band numbers, that kind of thing. Although he had done some of his own compositions, he just never really ventured outside of the jazz realm. And this album was his first foray into more of a funk-based sound, uh, you know, much more of an emphasis on rhythm and uh, beat than on melody. And it did take some of his fans by surprise, and not all of them necessarily in a good way. Uh, although maybe it wouldn't have taken them by surprise if it was more well known, and I don't think it was necessarily, that Harry had been born and raised in New Orleans. And remember, 1994, this was uh, back before we could just pop on the internet and look up an artist's biography to see where they were born and raised and stuff. And uh, several songs on this album have that New Orleans inflected funk jazz sound that you tend to hear from uh, sooner or later from pretty much every musician that uh, was born and raised in New Orleans, Dr. John, Alan Toussaint, uh, probably the Neville Brothers could be put in that category, and maybe to a lesser degree even Fats Domino. Now, I do like Harry Connick Jr. I don't necessarily love him, but uh, one of the things I like most about him is he's, he's just got a great personality. Uh, just a very personable guy, and you, you can see that in the, I don't know if he's still doing that daytime talk show or not, but he did it for a couple of years at least. And so yeah, just got a good personality. And I also thought that he was perhaps the best judge ever to sit on the panel of American Idol. That That's something, something that can be argued extensively, but he was very, very analytical. In the auditions phase, you know, the, the mass auditions phase, when somebody came in and sang for them, you always saw Harry sitting there and studying them, analyzing their performance, their voice and stuff. And at the end of it, he would give a very, very honest and constructive critique of their performance, what they can improve, what's good, what's not so good. And that's what a judge on these talent shows should should be, should always be, is, you know, and, and that's why why I kind of drifted away from American Idol. Just the, the um, judges started getting too, oh, I love you, I love you. And, you know, they started not giving very honest and uh, uh, constructive critiques like Harry did. I, I really miss the fact that Harry had such a short tenure on the judges panel of American Idol. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I do also like his voice, though, and uh, although, as I've mentioned before, his albums can be hit or miss with me. Now, uh, more often than not, I appreciate when an artist steps outside of their comfort zone and tries something different, so that's one reason why I kind of like this album. Uh, now, although I do tend to prefer Harry's Jazz Standards albums, I do kind of like this one. Uh, the centerpiece song is uh, the only single actually that made the Billboard 200, or Billboard Hot 100, excuse me, was I Could Only Whisper Your Name, and that was in, on the soundtrack of a movie, I, I guess, as well. And that song is pretty much representative of this album's sound, although it does take a couple of uh, questionable detours. Uh, there are a couple of interludes that are kind of weird spoken word things, and they don't really seem to serve much of a purpose, uh, in my opinion. Although that could be argued for interludes in general, they don't seem to have a place. Occasionally they do. And there are a couple of instrumentals on here that include uh, the really upbeat Funky Dunky, which I love the, the name of that one, and also the more uh, subdued and rather oddly titled Joe Slam and the Spaceship. Very strange name for a song, but then in a way that's kind of the 90s for you. Artists were doing kind of strange things sometimes in the 90s, and maybe that you can chalk that up to this being the 90s. I don't know. But uh, the title track, which opens the album, uh, the track called She, is an excellent and kind of a groovy mid-tempo love song. I really enjoyed that one. And To Love the Language is another song, which is a kind of a lively and fun, and it's got an almost ragtime sound to it. And it's kind of a, a love letter of sorts to... Uh, Cajun English, you know, the, the, the uh, English dialect that's spoken down in uh, Louisiana. And there's a song called Honestly Now, which starts as a ballad but builds into more of a power ballad, and it kind of has a foreboding sort of sound to fit its dark lyrics, kind of a dark sound to fit its dark lyrics. 
So that one's, that one's also kind of a standout. Uh, there's a song toward the end of the album, that, actually the two songs near the, at the end of the album, That Party is one of them. And that one's kind of interesting. It's sort of a laid-back, dance, funk, R&B-ish thing. Uh, the, it has processed vocals, though. That's kind of one of the odd things about it that makes it uh, stand out in an arguably not-so-great way. Uh, but it does make it unique. So, uh, And then the closing track, Booker, switches back and forth between a slow swaying ballad and a heavily rhythmic bouncer with an almost Tin Pan Alley feel to it. So, you know, that one, you know, it's the, the kind of schizophrenic quality of that song aside, that one's pretty good. But yes, uh, to sum it up really though, this is definitely not the best Harry Connick Jr. album out there, and its critical reception both at the time and I think also in retrospect, their feedback is not terribly complimentary either. But one reason I like this album is for the chances he took with the sound. So yeah, and uh, I, I've got, what do I have, eight, seven or eight Harry Connick Jr. albums. They're like right down here in my <laughs> wall here. Uh, and I'm going to add this one to my collection. I, it, it's a keeper, I think. Uh, as I said, not his best. But it just shows a different facet to him. I don't know if it's a facet that he look back, looks back on fondly or not uh, nowadays. But, uh, you know, as I said, it's, uh, it's all, all, oops, I'll be keeping it. And, uh, yeah, I kind of liked it. And uh, maybe on uh, subsequent spins it will uh, reveal its charms more to me as time goes on. And now the grand-ish, finale-ish to the video. The second of two bargain bags for the month. Top off the top. Let's blow the top off this sucker. Peekaboo, you see CDs, but I don't yet. I, I look up at the ceilings, but I don't accidentally peek at the CDs. I'm looking at my light fixture right now. And like most household light fixtures, it has some gnats, dead gnats, sitting at the bottom of the, uh, the shell or the dome or whatever that thing is. Anyway, a witty conversation there. Uh, oh, Sarah Brightman with her album La Luna. I have never checked out Sarah Brightman before. This will be an opportunity to do so. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of like Enya, and I guess she's kind of uh, in the same rough vein as Enya. So definitely will not mind checking her out at all. And oh, another well-known artist, Jody Watley. This is her album Affairs of the Heart. I'm not sure where it, it lands in her discography, chronologically speaking. But uh, yeah, I do have her Self-titled, I think it's her debut album on vinyl. So, give myself a listen to a second Jody Watley album. Then we have oh another one I will not be interested in. Build your baby's brain. I don't have a baby, so I have no use for the CD. <laughs> Although maybe it'll help me build my own brain. <laughs> but uh, yeah. classical music, I believe. Yeah, Mozart, Beethoven, Handel, Schubert, Vivaldi, Bach. Which Bach? Johann Sebastian or Offen? Anyway. That's a Victor Borga joke, sorry. Then we have another classical, uh, the Rubinstein Collection, uh, Beethoven, Boston Symphony Orchestra, so a, a, a orchestra with a decent reputation, and another classical CD, Christoph von, I don't know how, how to pronounce his last name, with uh, Beethoven pieces. The Cleveland Orchestra. And we have Another classical, yes, but almost uh, most of this bag is classical, apparently. Mozart stuff. London Symphony Orchestra. That's one of the better orchestras out there. So that may be worth listening to, just because it's the London Symphony Orchestra. And then the last bag out of this... There we go. Is another classical. Oh, Aaron Copland, Billy the Kid. There are maybe one or two classical composers I could say I am a stretching the definition of fan of, and Copeland is one of them. Uh, so yeah, Billy the Kid and Rodeo. Oh, the complete ballets of each. So, yeah. Oh, and Leonard Schlutkin and the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. So a notable conductor and a, don't know if it's a notable or orchestra or not, but uh, this may be a keeper. So. I've kind of been looking for, well, not really looking for, but I, I'm not opposed to excuses for expanding my classical CD collection. So, well, there you go.
Well, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of February 2021. Bargain Bag is always over way too quickly. I have way too much fun with these videos. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the descri description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.